Today marks not only 70 weeks of me doing this project series, but also it is officially the halfway point of the 1960s. There were 52 movies. Today is number 27. So we are now in the second half of the releases for the 1960s. Hi, I'm Jocelyn, and this is the Disney Film Project. Let's get started. Today's film is The Misadventures of Merlin Jones, which was released on January 22nd, 1964. Merlin Jones is the brightest young student at a small Midwestern college. Possessing an extremely high IQ, he is head and shoulders above his fellow classmates, particularly in the field of scientific endeavor. Although admonished by his professor to proceed slowly, he is already applying the results of his research to not only the problems confronting the college, but also to assist some of his fellow students. His efforts as a do-gooder boomerang on all concerned, but eventually everything works out. The application of Merlin's meager knowledge of extrasensory perception and hypnotism results in some way out hilarious involvements. To get things started, I am putting this in the fine jar where it belongs. Even among the movies that are in the fine jar, this is not one of my favorites. I I like Tommy Kirk in some things. I don't like him in others. And this is a prime example because this is his like big brained like no not know it all but basically know it all persona feels tired this movie also i mean like it feels very much like a younger version of the absent-minded professor and while there was like fred mcmurray had a lot like had some charm and the story was written well for that movie it didn't work so well here I think part of that had to do with the fact that this was originally not a movie. This was originally going to be a two-parter for the Disney television show. And you can tell. Like, it is so apparent in this movie. The whole first act of this movie is about Tommy Kirk's, like, Merlin Jones having, like, he can read people's thoughts. He can read people's minds. And, like, it completes, like, it has a complete arc. And it ends. And then it immediately switches. Like, there's no transition. There's nothing. And it bugs me so much every time I've had to watch this. I also don't like that Merlin Jones, for the most part, doesn't have any serious, doesn't get any serious consequences for his actions throughout this movie. And he has a lot of actions that should have gotten him in a lot more trouble. But I guess that's plot armor for you. I do still recommend it just because it, has a lot of cast members that I that I do think did a good job, such as Annette Funicello and Leon Ames, who played Judge Holmby. But it's not really a necessary watch. 